So, uh, good afternoon, everybody. But uh, before I begin, I, I want to first uh, acknowledge the, uh, the recent passing of uh, Mayor Miles Murdoch uh, from the town of Goderich. Um, his passing is a great loss for the town uh, that he served and for all of us. And, and I know that uh, everyone here joins with me in expressing sincere condolences to his family, uh, his friends, and his community. So thanks, uh, thanks, Colin, for the introduction. Uh, I'd like to uh, begin uh, by, first of all, thanking uh, and acknowledging my hardworking colleagues. Nina Tangri, uh, Ontario's Associate Minister of Housing, and Matthew Ray, my Parliamentary Assistant. Let's give them a round of applause. Both Nina and Matt have been terrific assets to my ministry. I know they've already had the opportunity to meet with so many of you uh, since joining uh, the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing in March. I'd also like to thank uh, Premier Doug Ford for his tremendous leadership. I'd like to thank my ministerial and legislative colleagues for really their active participation in the AMO conference and their close collaboration with municipalities throughout the year. Finally, I'd like to thank Mayor Josh Morgan for the warm welcome uh, to the City of London. I want to thank again Colin Best and Trevor Wilcox uh, for the invitation to speak to you all today. Thank you so much. This is an exciting time for Ontario. Ontario, l'Ontario vit une période excitant. Our province is leading the nation in job growth, with more than 700,000 full-time jobs created in the province since 2018. Over the last two and a half years, Ontario has attracted more than $25 billion in investments in the auto and the electrical vehicle battery sector alone, including investments by Stellantis in Windsor and just down the road from here with the exciting news uh, that Volkswagen is making the historic investment in St. Thomas. These investments lay the foundation for a resilient Ontario with opportunities for every community to thrive. And, and let's be clear, Ontario is thriving. L'Ontario est prospère. Last year alone, our province welcomed nearly half a million permanent residents. This is exciting, but we know that our communities must have the proper tools in place to support growth. That's why, for example, we recently introduced the Community Infrastructure and Housing Accelerator. It's a tool that allows municipalities, in partnership with the province, to speed up approvals for important projects like housing and hospitals while increasing transparency and accountability. It's already made a big difference in the town of Blue Mountains by streamlining approvals to create 160 long-term care beds and housing for seniors faster. Tay Township, they've also used the tool to expedite the construction of 66 much needed homes, including apartments and townhomes. I encourage all municipalities to look into ways to use CHIA to support projects, worthwhile projects in their communities. Our government has also taken decisive action to extend strong mayor powers to 28 municipalities that have committed to a housing target, helping these communities speed up delivery of key projects such as housing and infrastructure. And you all heard the Premier yesterday as he announced the extension of strong mayor powers to an additional 21 municipalities, provided that they commit on delivering on our provincially assigned housing targets. The Premier also made a, a tremendous announcement in announcing our government's new Building Faster Fund that's going to provide up to $1.2 billion over three years to help municipalities that are either on track to meet or hopefully to exceed their housing targets. This fund will help municipalities pay for housing enabling infrastructure and related costs that support community growth. And I, I want to assure you 
that our government will continue to look for solutions that help municipalities get more people into homes that meet their needs and their budgets. And, and, and with that in mind, I'm announcing today that the government will be unveiling a slate of regional facilitators in Durham, Halton, Niagara, Simcoe County, Waterloo and York by September 11th of this year. These facilitators will be tasked with reviewing the structures that are in place in these fast-growing areas to ensure that they're up for the job in delivering efficient, effective and accountable government that residents both expect and deserve. And I know that those of you who represent these communities, you've been waiting too long already for this announcement. I really appreciate your patience. I, I want to assure everyone that our focus has always been to get this right. We wanted to make sure the process was right, so I want to thank you for your patience. We're, we're just, we're nearly there. As Housing Minister, I'm also too aware of the challenges Ontarians face when it comes to finding a home. That's why our, our government committed to building at least 1.5 million homes by 2031. We're already making steady progress to that goal. We released four housing supply action plans since 2019. We've been advancing and committed to advancing a plan each and every year under the leadership of Premier Ford. And since last November, I've also made several decisions on official plans which govern growth in municipalities that are home to more than 6 million Ontarians. These official plans are critical to our province's future, and I want to acknowledge and thank municipalities that were involved. I want to also thank them for their ongoing cooperation. We're also moving forward with the proposed provincial planning statement. We're really encouraged by the amount of feedback that we received through our consultation on the statement. Uh, the consultation, as all of you know, closed on August the 4th. I, again, I'd like to thank everyone who participated, took part, and, and submitted. This November, uh, it's going to be a further opportunity to provide input by you to our government's plan uh, to get more homes built. The province is going to be hosting a housing forum in November, key municipal associations, key stakeholders to discuss the next housing supply action plan and how we can work together to deliver on those housing targets. So I know as we deliver on these targets, it's critical that we're building a range of housing, including affordable housing. Over the past year, my ministry has been working very closely with municipalities and stakeholders to arrive at the definition of affordable housing that's genuinely affordable, but which doesn't stand in the way of getting shovels in the ground. I heard very clearly about the need to provide both clarity and stability so affordable homes can be built without delay. So that's why I intend to introduce uh, a legislation in the fall that, if passed, would update the, the definition of affordable housing uh, for the purpose of accessing development charge, discounts and exemptions. The, the definition would be largely based on the definition included in the 2020 Provincial Policy Statement and would take local income levels into account. So, so that means the definition used to determine eligibility for these discounts and exemptions would reflect the ability of local households to pay for housing and would reflect the reality of different housing markets across Ontario. So I, I want to thank all of you for your input as we move forward on this policy. We need to do this together. But we also need the federal government to do its part. That's why we're again calling on Ottawa to work with us to defer the HST on all new large-scale purpose-built rentals. Thank you. And if Ottawa refuses to take this step, Ontario is prepared to lead by example and take action ourselves so that we can build housing that our residents need and they deserve. We're also calling on the federal government to guarantee that at least 10% of the housing accelerator fund is reserved for small northern and rural communities. We, we need to ensure that these, part of the pro these parts of the province are not left behind and we want to ensure that our fair share of federal funding comes forward so municipalities and service managers can properly fund affordable and supportive housing. 
We're also going to continue to work with the federal government to secure our fair share of funding under the National Housing Strategy. And as a result of our negotiations, Ontario has secured about $2.9 billion for housing programs through 2027-2028. And I can assure you that we're not done advocating for Ontario yet. The federal government still underfunding our province by $480 million over the term of the strategy based on our core housing need. And these are dollars that should be going to your communities. I know that they're needed. I encourage you to join us in making the case directly to the federal government to ensure that communities are receiving the funding that they need. We're also continuing to work closely with municipalities when it comes to supporting newcomers to our province. And, you know, Ontario, we're proud to welcome more immigrants than any other province. But we need our federal partners to step up with long-term solutions to ensure that refugees and asylum seekers can access both shelter and supports. Because helping those experiencing or at risk of homelessness must be a shared priority for all levels of government. That's why Ontario invested an additional $202 million in our homelessness prevention program, bringing that annual investment to close to $700 million. We have put in place tangible long-term solutions, such as the comprehensive by-name list of people experiencing homelessness, along with information about their needs. We're also working with our partners to implement a new regulatory framework that protects critical community housing supply, encouraging housing providers to continue offering affordable rents for tens of thousands of households and continue to prioritize survivors of abuse and trafficking for rent gear to income assistance through the special priority policy. My ministry is also developing a guide that will help service managers who administer this policy uh, and support survivors so they can access the homes that they need. And I want to take this opportunity to thank Associate Minister Tangri and uh, our colleague, uh, Charmaine Williams, the Associate Minister of Women's Social and Economic Opportunity, who met with stakeholders. Give them a hand, that's right. <laughs> they met with stakeholders this summer to incorporate their expertise into our guide. I, I'm so very proud of all that we have accomplished together, but I think you agree there's much more we have to do. And let me be clear, we are ready and willing to do that work, our government remains to building Ontario and we'll continue working with AMO and all of our partners to create a stronger future for our remarkable province. Thank you so much. Merci beaucoup.